I suppose most people would would know now if they see me from the knee down, my legs would be very, you know, would be wasted. Whatever muscle is there doesn't work. It's it has no um, impact. And from my elbows down as well, my my hands, the the muscles in my lower arms would also be wasting. So, for example, things like um, uh, doing up my kids' nappies, you know, I find very difficult. We'll say zips, buttons, tying laces. Uh, you know, even things like losing my grip now, I find that kind of thing is is difficult. So, um, I suppose for for cycling, where I suppose obviously not having uh, effective calf muscles is, is a big problem. Cycling, I suppose people don't think that the calves are used a lot, but they're about ten percent or ten to fifteen percent of the pedal stroke power. But when you're sprinting, that's a lot higher. So in cycling, really, it hits me. You know, I mean, certainly it, it causes me to lose a lot of power, and I'm very inefficient on the bike. Um, but particularly sprinting, my kind of sprint and one minute power will be very low for someone who's racing at um, able to race a kind of A2, A1 level, you know. So that would have been a big problem for me racing is, is to try and kind of get around that fact, you know. And I mean, it's, it sounds like from an early age, like you were driven and you were surrounded by competition. And I mean, did, did the disability then just drive you on further? Was it something that you were going to overcome? Like, because... You know, to be at that level of fitness, to be able to drop into an A1 race and, and, and to hold it, you know, is, is fairly spectacular. Yeah, I, it's hard to say. I kind of, I don't remember at the time, I suppose. Uh, I think when I was a kid, I kind of almost didn't believe it, you know. Mm. Uh, I knew there was something going on, but I didn't believe it. Um, and um, I suppose in a way, it, it, yeah, I, I, one of the things I think that was I um, that kind of kept me driven was um, at the time I got diagnosed, I had contrary medical advice. So one one person was telling me that really, you know, you shouldn't continue doing sports to a high level because it might exacerbate things. Whereas I had other medical advice, and thankfully my my parents as well who told me, listen, keep going, you know, do whatever you want to do. And I think that has really helped me. And I think part of the reason why I, I suppose I I suppose kept driving what it was because I always felt that um, uh, that if I didn't, th- my condition would deteriorate far faster, you know, than it has. Mm. And and also there was it's hard as you know as you can imagine, like if you're you know into playing sports and into the competition, it, it was hard. It would have been hard just to give it up as a teenager, particularly, you know. And so the uh, definitely, I I never it never even occurred to me to kind of stop, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and your parents were really crucial in that and kind of encouraging you on instead of trying to wrap you in cotton wool yeah yeah no no for sure um uh definitely they they wouldn't have put any kind of barriers in my place i wouldn't have said you know don't don't try and do this or whatever and i think that's crucial just you know in general for anyone with a disability to be honest is to uh the, the issue of mobility for anyone who has a, a physical disability is really important and you know i would say that to anyone that um the more you can keep active, the more you can kind of move at whatever level you can. You don't have to obviously, you know, race A1 cycling or whatever, but it can have such a huge impact on your, your health overall. And, and to be honest, that goes for anyone, but particularly when you have a, a physical, you know, disability, it really makes a difference. 